Hi, everybody. Welcome to lesson seven, in which we're going to stretch the graphs of our functions. So in the last lesson, we slid the graphs around. Now we're going to stretch them vertically. We're going to pull them so they, they grow faster or they grow slower. So let's start by graphing the parent function of absolute value of x. So we did this last time. It starts at 0, 0, and then climbs up by 1 each time. And then over here, it climbs up by 1 each time, but going... Let me try that again. Let me plot some points. So again, you don't need to have that memorized, but you should know what absolute values look like. They look like these, and the parent function has a slope of 1 and a slope of negative 1 for those two pieces of the linear function. So let's graph this new absolute value function. So g of x equals 3 times the absolute value. So let's go to y equals and do three absolute values. So math, number, abs, x. Three absolute value of x. So if I go to my table, well, let's look at the graph of it first. It's still a v, but it's a lot skinnier than that one, that other one was. So 0, 0, 1, 3. So it's, it's, going, it's not going up by ones. It's going up by threes this time. Because look what I did. I had a y value of 1, but I multiplied it by 3, so it goes all the way up to 3. I had a y value of 2 times 3 gives me 6. I had a y value of 3 times 3 gives me 9. Well, 0 times 3 is still 0. So the branches are getting multiplied. The, the y values there are getting multiplied by 3 because I had a 3 out front. So this was a vertical stretch by 3. A vertical stretch by 3. And notice the graph became narrower. It got skinnier. When you multiplied it by 3, it's growing faster. So it becomes more narrow. It becomes narrower. It gets skinnier when I multiply by 3. Well, multiplying by a half is going to cut everybody in half. So instead of multiplying by 3, I'm going to multiply by a half. So 0 is still 0. What's 2 cut in half? 1. What's 4 cut in half? 2. 6 cut in half? So the x value is not changing. We're only multiplying the y values to create these new graphs. So notice this graph here is a lot wider than I started with. Cut in half. Cut it in half. I'm skipping every other one just to make them look nicer. So there's this graph. This graph is, go away, smart view. There we go. Go away. Sparky's not happy right now. There we go. So H, this is H, and I believe this green one here was G. So notice this number in front is shrinking it. It's compressing it down or it's stretching it. So this is a vertical stretch by a half. So this is when I'm multiplying the number, and this became wider. So if I look at Desmos here, here's my parent function, and I'm multiplying it by a number. If that number is bigger than 1, the graph becomes more narrow, right? If I'm bigger than 1, the graph becomes more narrow. But if I'm smaller than 1, the graph becomes wider. So that's the big thing I need you to get from this. That's the big thing I need you to get from this. So to get the graph of a times f of x, we multiply the y values. We multiply the y values by a, whatever that number is. So it's a vertically, we vertically stretch the graph. We vertically stretch the graph. So that's the big idea of today. This number out front here is a multiplier. It multiplies the y values so it becomes narrower or it becomes wider. Narrow when that number is bigger than 1 or wider when that number is between 0 and 1. So it becomes fatter. The graph becomes fatter when you're between 0 and 1. Graph the parent function again. So I got this. Okay. It's much easier when I plot points. Actually, I'm not even going to graph that. I'm just going to jump to down here. Graph these functions here. 
negative absolute value, negative three, negative one half. So let's just look at this. I've got Desmos up. We can play with it. So positive values made me narrower if they were bigger than one. Wider if I was between zero and one. Watch what happens. What if I go negative? What if I put a negative in front of it? Well, it's the same exact graph, but what happened? It got flipped. And last year, you guys learned about a vocab word for flipping. A flipping, the negative is doing a reflection. It's a reflection over the x-axis. So if that number is negative, that negative out front is going to reflect it. Well, what if it's negative 3? Well, the negative is reflecting it. And is that narrower or wider than the original parent there? Well, since it's 3, ignore the negative, 3 makes it narrower. The negative did the reflection. So there's two steps here. There's two pieces here. This guy is reflected and narrower. Well, what if I had negative 1 half? Let's look at that graph. Well, if I said negative 1 half or 0.4, well, the negative did the reflection, the 0.4 or the 0.5 makes it wider. So the rules are the same. The negative number just does the reflection. So it's reflected and wider. Okay, so the big idea is that if I have that, I'm going to go over this again. If I have a number out front, if that number out front is bigger than 1, I become narrower. On between 0 and 1, I become wider. And if I'm negative, I do a reflection. I flip it over the x-axis. These are the three things that can happen. I can become wider. I can become narrower. And if that number out front's negative, I can flip it. Because all you're doing is you're multiplying your y values. So if I multiply my... So this, this point one one, if I multiply it by negative 3... Well, it's going to become negative 3 and make this make that V go down. So all you're doing is you're multiplying, and these are the effects it can have. So consider the family of functions A times X squared. What's the vertex of all these functions? Well, it's plain old X squared, so the vertex is 0, 0. It's a parabola that touches through the X axis and the Y axis at the origin, 0, 0. So if the leading coefficient is positive, so if I change this to x squared instead of absolute value of x, let me change this to my calculator, x squared, squared. There we go. There's my parabola. So there's my parent graph here. There's my parent parabola. If it's positive, regardless of if it's fatter or wider, uh, sorry, uh, wider or narrower, it's always opening up. It's always opening up. So these graphs, if I have 1x squared, 2x squared, 4x squared, 1 half x squared, as long as they're positive, the graph opens up, which we say is concave up. They smile. If you have a positive number out front, your parabola is smiling at you. That's the only time I'll ever say that. It's a concave up parabola. If the graph, if the equation has a negative leading coefficient, right? The leading coefficient is the number in front of that highest term. That vocab is coming back. Negative 1x squared, negative 2x squared, negative 4x squared, negative 1 half x squared. Well, let's see what happens to those parabolas. Once I go negative, that parabola, we turn that smile upside down into a frown there. Again, the only time I'll ever say this because we're going to sound like mathematicians and say these parabolas are concave down. So if you have a positive leading coefficient, you're concave up. If you have a negative leading coefficient, that reflection happened, and you're concave down. What if I'm between 1 and negative 1? So if I'm trapped between 1 and negative 1, is that wider or narrower if I'm between negative 1 and 1. These guys right here are all wider. So if you have that fraction between smaller than 1, if you have that smaller than 1 piece that grows slowly, 
So that's why it becomes wider than the original. Which means if I'm less than negative one and bigger than one, oh, sorry, ah, erase, erase, I have these flipped here. I read this one and wrote it up here. If I'm greater than one, so 1 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 10, or negative 1.5, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 10. These guys are narrower because they grow faster. And then this is what I said here. So here's the original parent. These guys are skinnier. They're inside that original one. And where I said here, negative 1 to 1, that fraction, 1 half, negative 2 thirds, 0.4. These guys are wider. Okay, you can always check on your calculator too. So you graph x squared, and then okay, what does 0.5x squared look like? What does 4x squared look like? What is negative 0.5? Use your calculator to help you graph these functions. Got two little problems here, and we're done. So the graph below shows the uh, functions that are listed. Label each graph. So I've got plain old x squared. 1 half x squared, negative 2x squared, negative, uh, positive 3x squared, and then negative x squared. So notice these negative ones need to be concave down. Those negative ones have to be these concave down ones here. Well, negative 2 is going to be more narrow, right? Once you're bigger than 1, get rid of the negative. The negative did the reflection. Once I'm bigger than 1, it becomes more narrow. So this inside guy here is number 3, negative 2x squared, which makes this outside one number 5x squared, negative x squared. So now I'm stuck between x squared, 1 half x squared, and 3. So this 1 half here, remember, a 1 half makes me wider. It makes me fatter. So that's this outside guy. That outside guy there is the fattest one. Whereas this three, he's the skinniest one because he grows really fast. He's skinny. He's bigger than one. So that's choice four on the inside there, which leaves me with number one in the middle. So it goes two, one, four, three. I guess you would say five, three. Okay. Again, use your calculator to help you out. That's why we have that. But I need you to understand the effect of that leading coefficient. That leading coefficient is very powerful. So consider the function x squared, our parent. Describe the sequence of transformations here. So what happens? We have to recognize these transformations. So the first thing is I vertically stretch it by 2. Vertically stretch by 2. I double everybody. Then this goes back to last lesson. What two shifts happen here? That's all left or right. Well, the inside one is opposite, so that's right one unit and up three units. Check that on your calculator. You can see that that's the shift that happens. I went right one up three, and it's narrower. This, na this two here makes me narrow because it's bigger than one. It's not a small little fraction. It's not a fractional piece of one. And finally, what's going on here? Well, there's just a negative. And what was the whole idea of these negatives? These negative leading coefficients open down. They're concave down. So this is a frowny parabola. This one here opens down. So we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. I didn't stretch it. I just flipped it. This guy's just doing the flip. And then what do these two shifts do? These two shifts are having me go left 4 and down 1. So notice this guy's concave down, so he has a maximum. If I draw a concave down parabola, he has a maximum. This guy over here was concave up. His vertex, this point here, is a minimum. Okay, so this is going to be really quick in the future. When I see a parabola, when I see y equals negative 3x squared plus 7x plus 1, and I need to pick a graph for it, well, I can say, wait a minute, hold on. It's got a negative, and it's opening downwards. So I know immediately that this parabola is going to be skinny and open downwards. And I knew that 
just by looking at that leading coefficient. The leading coefficient affects how the parabola is shaped and which way it opens. So hopefully you feel good with this vertical stretch stuff. We'll practice it. You got the homework here to do, and you can practice it with your calculator is the beautiful piece. You can always use your calculator, but remember that leading coefficient is powerful. It decides if you're wider or narrower and tells you if you're concave up or concave down. Did a reflection occur? All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. There's Desmos again. Will I look? There we go.